Hi folks, we've got a, a free gift someone sent us, one of our subscribers. This is called a crimpit baby. It sure is. And it's got nothing to do with hair. Yeah, I've never seen this before folks, or never heard of it at all, have you? Never. What is it? A crimpit. Ah, we've had the box out and we know what's inside. And where's it come from, babe? You sent it to us. Sarah and Gary. Sarah Catherine, and Gary? With their little granddaughter, April. Well done, thank you very much for sending us this. We've never heard of this before. So uh, it was a new one on us, and we've actually had to look at a, a video on YouTube to see how people are using these things. Let's take it out of the box and show you. So this is it, folks. It's called a crimpit. It's basically two little plastic things that you, or what I didn't realise is that you put bread in there, and you put fill the centre up with something, and then you put another bit of bread on top of what I thought, and then you crimp it. That's the idea of it's called a crimpit. Oh, it seals it, doesn't it? And it makes like a little pasty baby. Exciting. Very similar to a sandwich toaster, but yeah. without having a big bulky thing on the worktop. And uh, we all know what sandwich toasters are to clean, baby, don't we? Oh, well, you don't. I do. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> so apparently there's two ways you can use these. So I've actually finally looked at the instructions, baby. You looked at them after me and you said, oh, we need to have fins. And I didn't know what that was, did I? No. No. So basically, we've got a loaf of bread, which you can do it with if you haven't got any of the fins. But these are the things called thins. I've never seen them before. They come from Warburton's, and all they are basically is a, well, a, like a flat piece of bread which has got a ridges on it. And uh, this, this actual machine, well, it's not a machine show, is it? No. What is it? A box. A gadget. I call it a gadget. It's a box. It's a box. This actually is designed for these thins, apparently. But you can use a normal slice of bread as well and it will crimp around the outside of it and the people I've seen on YouTube Sharon have been using it in a toaster but there's only one problem when you actually crimp it and make the thing together the sandwich together you put it in a toaster these are a lot smaller than a normal slice of bread and as a result of that I've seen people dig them out of a toaster with a knife Sharon ta, ta, ta. health and safety come on please folks so we're not going to do that we're going to cook them in the air fryer and also one of the other things as well is when they cook them in the toaster Sure enough, the outside toast all right, but they're actually quite thick, and the food inside is only lukewarm. Although good. they do say after you've done that, you can put them in the microwave for about 15 seconds. Yeah, but then it won't be so crunchy. No, right? it won't be crunchy, Sharon, you lose the crunch. And so to us, the, the ideal thing is the air fryer. Right, let's get putting these together, folks. We'll get them in the air fryer, cook them up, and see what they turn out like. <laughs> right, my little princess, so what are we gonna do first? Let's show them, first of all, how these little thins sit in this machine. They do come apart, folks. They are uh, already coming in half. So all you do is you push them in and just push the middle in a bit and just push it down to make the little crevice there. So what we're gonna go for first, baby? A bit of ham, cheese and onion we're gonna have. Right, you don't need to butter them. You can do if you want to, but we're just gonna go, we're gonna go broke back shower at the moment, aren't we? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. So if you just plunking in some ham, cheese and onion, be generous, but don't go too mad, but you can fill them up you wanna apparently leave the edge clear so just get yourself enough in there what about a bit of mustard in there Sharon? yeah I guess I've got a lovely jar for you there Sharon right so again she's just gonna put some mustard uh, keeping the edge clear because we're gonna be crimping that folks so just put it in the middle again we've never done these before so we're in the same position as you we've we're, we're crimping virgins we're crimping virgins baby <laughs> right so all right plonk it on the top baby Everything's cut to size, and then all she's going to do then is put that on and line it up. Get everything, make sure it's central, and give it a put. Put your palm on it, baby. I'm just making sure it's lined up. Give it a good push down. Yeah, I think you've done it there, baby. No need to give an egg wash on, I think, folks. So you take that off, and as you see, so you might get a bit of crimpage around there. So you can just pull that off. Depends how well you centralise it. And all you do then, apparently, is you can't give it a tap. There you go. Oh, look at that, folks. Look, and that is it. That's your little crimp sandwich. Round of applause for Sharon. That's nice, isn't it? I do like that. That's that's well packaged and all, Sharon, isn't it? I'll tell you what, let's get another one so we can get two in the air fryer at once. Right, okay. They're actually pre-cut like that. And looking at the packet, let's get the packet out, Sharon. They're only 100 calories per thin. So in she goes, oh, corned beef, Sharon, that's controversial. Ooh. Mind our bloody new knife. Yeah, thank you. I'll have to sharpen that now. A bit of onion. Okay. A bit of corned beef and onion. Spread it about in there, baby. 
Shall we put I might have had it a little bit thicker, that slice, to be honest with you. Put another slice on top, shall If I'm having a corn beef, go sideways to it. Don't just hack through it. That's it, baby. Oh, look at the way you cut through that. You cut through a knife like a butter, Sharon. Yeah. And just make a little sandwich. Whack your thin on top. Make sure it's central, baby. Push it in. Make sure you push it right in, Sharon. In fact. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Now, let's see this one come out. Now she knows how to do it. Little tap. There you go. And there's another one. Absolutely fantastic. That's a couple of things we've done there, folks. I'm going to have a go now. Just to show you blokes that I do do a bit. And I can have a go at this. And she wants me to do the messy one as well. So let's get some beans in there. Oh, I ain't got the thing in there yet, have I? I ain't got the thin in there, Sharon. So we just place the thin in there. And can you see the way, Sharon? I'm, I'm, go down to me, baby. Down there. Can you see where I'm pushing the edges in, look? Oh. And then thumbing it in, look. I'm going around the edge, I'm thumbing it around the edge, look. In there, I made a nice little thing, nice little divot there. Because this is going to be right messy, shall I? Right, in with the beans. I don't want too much juice, shall I? I don't want it to be too moist. So I'm just going around the centre there. <laughs> with the old beans, look, I'm giving it a nice portion, shall I? Get it in, pushing it into the corners, pushing, make sure you wiggle it into the sides a bit more. He's telling me not to push it in the corners, I know, no, but that's I've got, enough. Shout, mine's all moist, yours Give ain't you moist, is it? Give me a chance to go on the top. I know, it's baby. Gonna, he's going to get leakage. I know, Sharon, I'm just showing you how to do liquid stuff. Right, come here, look, I've got some lovely grated cheese here, folks. And all I'm going to do is pepper it on the top there. Oh, God. Well, I'd sprinkle it, not pepper it. Well, myself. I'm peppering it from a distance, shall you see? Look at this, look. Yeah, I want plenty of cheese. I want to be able to taste the cheese, yeah? He said to me, I know. What? Don't get it round the edges, you've yeah. got to leave it all Shall? Right. I'm going, I'm going yeah. full full metal jacket here. Yeah? Right, okay, there we go. Do I need mustard in there, Sharon? No, no. it's plenty in there. Right, well let's go, let's put the cap on this one. Right, so again, lay your cap on. This thing's designed for it, folks. I'm doing it a different way this, Sharon, you see. I'm teasing the edges in first, look. This is the first time I've done it, folks, so I'm just winging it. Well, I've just... The yeah? first time I've done it. Right, here know. we go. Straight on with the cap. And then... Oh, look. Oh, push it down. Let me push it in hard, shall I? I'm really trying to whack it in there now, look. <laughs> See that? Look, look, folks, I'm crimping it, look. Like a little like a steering wheel, look. There we go, look. I'm happy with that. Right, take the cap off. Oh, look. Oh, Sharon, look at that, look. Uh, that looks like a Greg's pasty, doesn't it? A steak bake. Yeah. Look, little tap. Oh, look, folks, can you just see the crimp I've got on the edge of that? Look, that is gonna, I'm sure that's gonna be beautiful, that one, folks. So, all right, let's put that down. We've got three now, shall And how quickly are these taking to do, folks? Should we do the sweet one for the kids? Now, normally, folks, when you have a sandwich toaster, you've got to get it out of the cupboard. It's down in this cupboard down here, shall it? You get it out, all the lead gets tangled around something else. Why? What? Just get on with it. You bring it up on the counter, you lift it. Oh, someone's not cleaned it from the last time, Sharon. That's what they say, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and who has to clean it? Yeah. Us. Me. Sharon. <laughs> so anyway, this is controversial, Sharon. A lot of people ain't going to like this. Bit of the old strawberry jam. Let's stir it up a bit, Sharon. So on with the bread. Push it again, push the edges in, look. I'm liking this tool, this tool folks, I must say. Now this could get hot, so you've got to be careful, folks. Well, it won't get hot till it's cooked. Well, I know that. I'm talking about when it's cooked, Sharon. Right, so let's get a bit of this. And I think, Sharon, it might be wise to put this on the lid. What well, do you yeah, reckon? I would have done that myself, yeah? yeah? In case of spillage or over, over spill or whatever, and it goes everywhere. Right, let's put that one together now. This is the sweet one. There's no way of knowing which one's going to be which, Sharon. Whack that on there, and literally push it down. Crimp it up. You need a little bit of pressure, folks, if you want to be doing these. But I don't think it's too much pressure. As you can see, sometimes the edge comes off. Not a problem. Just break it off if you want. Well, there you go, folks. In that short time, we've just done four different ones. We're going to try them out now. We're going to put them in the air fryer. Right, so here they are, folks. We've got the uh, Ninja Dual Blaze air fryer. But some of you might have a single tray. But all we're going to do is literally just put these in there two per tray for the moment and just whack them back in there put this one out i don't know what flavors we'll watch out do we no we're, we're, it's, it's like a, a lucky dip isn't it 
Well, that one's quite heavy. I don't get the cheese and beans. <laughs> These two are quite heavy, so I would imagine they'll be the uh, cheese and beans and uh, one of the other liquidy ones. Right, so let's put them in there. So you reckon, Sharon? Maximum, Chris, do it match. Right, so we go match first, because we're going to put them both on the finish at the same time. Maximum, Chris. We're going to do that right now, baby. Maximum, Chris. So max, Chris, comes up at 240 centigrade. We're going to move the time up to seven minutes. And then we're going to press start. Both of them are going to go now for seven minutes. And what are you saying? You do what you want anyway. You have to Look, folks, look. That's we're being criticised there by all these bleating people here. Look, apart from baby Frank over there, look. Yeah, he's he's you asked for time. Oh, we gave you time. Baby Frank, hey yeah, Frank. Anyway. We're, we, we, we've never done this before, Frank, have we? Oh, he's picked an odd number. He's picked an odd number and all because we're going to turn him over halfway. <laughs> Three and a half minutes, Sharon. Three and a half minutes. <laughs> See what I mean, folks? Where you've got all, we, we've never done this before, but you've got all these barking out orders in the background. <laughs> Unbelievable. We're going to turn them over at three and a half minutes. So how about that? Are you happy now, baby? Well, I'd have been happy with <laughs> Unbelievable. Right, well, while they're cooking, folks, we've already turned them over at half time, so um, I don't know whether you really need to do that because they do cook from the underside as well. well. I just say I do with toast to get the crunch. Right, okay. So anyway, we thought we'd just quickly whack one together made out of bread. So let's see Sharon do that. Right, so all we're going to do is literally just put one in the centre there. I know there's a lot of overhang there, but these are quite large slices of bread. Just pushing the middle down, just like you would do with one of these thins. Literally, just tip it in. She's going for the ham and uh, do you want to put some cheese in there as well, baby? Oh, ham cheese. There we go. Put some cheese in there. Whack that in. <laughs> just get that all in there. Make it all nice and gooey, hopefully. That'll do ya. So we're just going to crimp that one down, folks. All right, so we get the top on. Oh, that's be good. Yeah, I know. It's all, it's all trial and error, shall Just so people say that you can do it with these, that's all. Go on in, whack it down. All right, she wants me to push it down, folks. So we just give it a good push down. It won't line up correctly, baby. So there we go, just push that together folks. I'm just gonna pull that bread around from the outside, look. Just like that. So hopefully now that's give us a nice little crimped package that we can just whack out like that. Does it come out the same? In fact, I, I like them better to be honest with you. Just my choice, that feels substantial. So they've just finished now folks. I think you might have had them on for a bit too long. They look a little bit dark to me. So we'll get them out and then we'll quickly whack this one in and show you. Right, well, here they are folks. Those are the four thins there. Now, all I will say is, is that it's probably a good idea probably to either lightly butter them on the surface, get some liquid butter or butter them first so you get that nice little glaze. They look a bit dry, but even so, they're still looking good. I don't know what ones these are, so we're just gonna have a little look inside by cutting them in half. Well, they are hot inside, folks. That one is the corned beef and mustard. I'm no, corned beef onions. and onions. So let's leave that one for the minute. This one at the back here. I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna clean the knife after each cut. This one here. Oh God, that's the jam one, Sharon. That's the jam one, come out the back there. Let's have a go at this one at the uh, back here as well. That's the uh, ham, cheese and mustard one. And this one's gonna be the messy one, Sharon, isn't it? This has got the beans in it, I think, hasn't it? Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, I'll just show you that, folks. Look at that, look. Right, baby, I think it's taste test time. What do you want to go for first? Ham, um, I'm in. What, what one's this? Ham, cheese and onion. Ham, cheese and onion and mustard, a layer of mustard on it. bit dry, I think it would benefit with a coating of butter on it, shall mm -hmm. But it's not bad, is it? Nope, you can tell. Nice little snack. Yeah, I'm happy with that. This one, corned beef and onion. That's nice. Yeah. Corn beef tastes so different. Mm. Yeah, when it's cooked, it tastes absolutely lovely. Baked beans, cheese, what else was in this? How do you remember? That's 
아. 